Hello, it's been a while, um, but I've decided to make another video and it's mostly a second year update, but also a bit of a Q&A because I had no idea what to say. I just knew that a video was probably overdue. So I have cast my net into Twitter and I've asked some of my friends to uh, ask me some questions to give this video a bit of direction. So before I answer the questions, I'm just going to talk a little bit about second year so far. Um, as I alluded to in the video that I made in November, I think, second year has been so much better than first year. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, I felt a little tentative making that update in November because I thought it was kind of early on in the semester and I didn't really know how things were going to pan out. Um, but it's February now. There's a couple of months left really now until Easter and then that's kind of it. That's revision period and that's exams and that's second year done, um, which is terrifying. So at the moment I'm kind of I'm at the halfway point um, in second year and I'm also at the halfway point in my degree. I'm two and a half years in, including foundation year, and I've got another two and a half years to go. So uh, yeah, it, it feels like I've come a long way so far. Um, and I, these two and a half years have gone by so quickly. And I think the remaining two and a half years will go very quickly too. So first semester's over. I didn't have any January exams because the modules that carry the January exams I'm not doing till next year because I'm part-time. Uh, so I have no real indication of how well I've done in first semester, but I thoroughly enjoyed the modules that I did. So I, I was studying, or I am studying, three core year-long modules. Um, one is called Classical Fields, and in first semester we did Vector Calculus, um, and second semester is Electro and Mag. I'm also doing Thermal and Statistical Physics, and in the first semester it was Thermal, Thermodynamics, and the second semester is more the Statistical Mechanical Interpretation of, of Thermodynamics. And what's the other module? Quantum, quantum world. We were introduced to Dirac notation early on in the first semester, um, and it's a lot of maths, and I've really, really enjoyed quantum. I have no idea what's going on. Um, I feel like I'm just picking up and refining my math skills at the moment, and then trying to place it in some kind of context. Um, first semester vector calculus was amazing. Vector calculus was one of these words that was sort of bandied about when I first looked into doing physics. I remember going to Lancaster and they, uh, they sort of put a lot of emphasis on vector calculus and that the students that came through the Open University pathway didn't have those necessary skills. So I was always a little bit scared of vector calculus, but it's great. I really enjoy the sort of the geometry of the questions when you set them up and yeah. Again, don't really know what any of it means, but I've, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, Nina, our lecturer, was ace. I'm also doing two first year modules. I'm doing labs and I'm doing first year computing. Um, first year computing, like first year maths, is a standalone module. And then in second year, it's, it's a lot more integrated into the subjects that you do. Um, so, for example, I've been doing first year computing as a standalone module and then in classical fields coursework I've been expected to use my computing skills which has been interesting because it's been like figuring out first year computing and trying to put that into a context of a second year module and it's been fairly successful I thought you know I could have really flunked that and no one would have you know expected me to do better but it's worked out all right so that's been good I guess I feel a little bit disappointed with labs I remember reading a I'll have to attach the PDF or something. I remember reading a document, like a guide to studying physics, it was probably from like the 1950s or 60s. And it talked about, you know, the best way to approach physics, um, sort of learning the material, attending lectures, making your own notes, going over problems, etc. all the stuff that you know. But it also talked about the importance of labs and, and getting to grips with um, your time in, in doing experiments um, and how important it was to understand physics and I hate labs. <laughs> They're not that awful, really. I think I spend a lot of time um, preparing for them and then never really understand what I'm meant to do when I'm there and they make me feel incredibly anxious and I would much rather just sort of bury my head in a maths textbook instead. Um, but I did an internship between my foundation year and my first year in nanoscience, and there's a video about that. Um, 
and that's always sort of kept experimental physics at the back of my mind so it's definitely not written off yet but at the moment I am leaning towards switching to theory which means dropping second year labs that decision has not been made yet um, so anyway that was a rather long uh, roundup of second year so far but uh, I feel a lot more comfortable now um, I still have all the doubts I still have the imposter syndrome and all of that but I feel a little bit more confident in myself I think so it's been much 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 more enjoyable so let's go on to the questions I have a number of questions I'm gonna try and answer now this one is from uh, Professor Gerardo Adesso who is a mathematical physics at the University of Nottingham who is a mathematical physics who is a mathematical physicist at the University of Nottingham and he responded to me on Twitter so thanks Gerardo he says at this stage are you closer to finding your preferred sp specialization within physics and astronomy or are you more confused than ever about which topics or branches you love good question so when I started my degree and when I started this route into physics um, my intention was to keep everything as broad as possible when I was little the catalyst for me studying physics was astronomy I completely fell in love with astronomy when I was uh, in primary school I wanted to be an astronomer and then for various reasons didn't pursue that academically and then came back around again uh, after I read A Short History of Nearly Everything which I've mentioned before and I just fell in love with science in general so my whole intention of studying physics has, be has been to keep things as broad as possible. Saying that in foundation year I was already surprised by how much I loved the maths module um, because you know, I was the kid with an E at GCSE for maths. And although I've never hated maths, it's never really been something I thought I would pursue. And, and um, Dr. Megan Gray, who is a lecturer at the university, I spoke to her earlier this week and she reminded me that we had a conversation before I started my foundation year about what I might expect in first year, you know, the level of maths and the, the content. And she showed me some stuff from the module that she teaches on called Frontiers in Physics. And I remember looking at the maths and she was like, it's not that bad, you know, look at this stuff, it's okay. And I remember recognising some of the symbols and things, but otherwise I had GCSE maths level uh, knowledge in my brain. I was just kind of like, I have no idea what any of that means, but let's hope that when I get there, I might understand it. And so I guess my love of maths has been um, quite a surprise. And I'd say that if there is any specialisation that it will be driven by that at the moment. So I guess I'm probably more confused than ever, maybe. I'm just kind of happy to see where, which directions I get pulled in and which directions I push myself in. And a large part of me is confident that I'll be happy in almost any area. So let's see, let's see what happens in two and a half years time. Dr. Matthew Brooks, who is a lecturer at the University of Nottingham. Hello, Matt. He and I worked together last summer um, on an exhibition that he and his group were putting together for the Royal Society. There's a video, I'll put a link or something. Um, and Matt says, do you feel you benefit from being in a department with an excellent research reputation? Do you feel you can be part of the research going on? That's a good question. Um, in terms of uh, benefiting from being in a department with an excellent research reputation. Um, I haven't been in any other physics department so I have very little to compare it to but what I have noticed is that there is an emphasis at Nottingham on research and, and integrating what our lecturers and researchers do into undergraduate uh, studies as much as possible. So the third and the fourth year projects that the students do will have links to or be directly related to the ongoing research in the department in the school. Yeah, I guess I benefit from it. I guess we all benefit from it because the cutting edge research and the things that are going on in the background, behind the, behind the scenes, behind the teaching, um, when that sort of flows over, so we do seminars based on ongoing research from the school or from outside the school for the Frontiers module that I mentioned earlier, so speakers will come in and talk to first year undergraduates predominantly, but anyone else is, is open to attend. Um, and those have been really insightful. And I remember Matt, I remember um, Matt giving a talk when I was in first year about the MEG, Magnetoencephalography research that he and his group 
were doing and they'd published a paper in Nature. And medical physics had always been something that I just thought was not really my cup of tea. Medical physics, astronomy, not that interested. But I remember being completely fascinated by this talk and all of the incredible applications that this research had and the collaborations behind it um, was astounding. And uh, I remember speaking to Matt after that talk. So things like that are really useful because they broaden your mind in, you know, give you an insight into something that you might otherwise think not really a cup of tea um, and getting involved yeah I mean I didn't expect to get involved with that that kind of research and although my skills uh, my internship was based mostly on on video making and uh, social media it did give me a real taste for what goes on in, in Matt's group and Mark Fromhold's group who was also involved um, and it was amazing because I got to speak to all of these researchers, these PhD students, postdocs, professors, other undergraduates who were doing internships within those groups in their third year and fourth year. And uh, it teaches you a lot more about the things you're interested in on a bigger scale than you get from your lectures day to day. And I think that's really important. Would you say that you get the same amount of support as first year or substantially less as they, ex they expect you to be able to do it all yourself? Uh, two questions here and what career internship opportunities have you seen um, hello Luke Luke and I did foundation year together he's now studying aerospace and he I think is quite interested in physics and nearly switched to do physics actually um, support support's always been hard I needed a lot of support in first year but I don't know whether it was necessarily tuition or whether it was something more than that. Um, but the School of Physics and Astronomy are really, really good in terms of support. They're very open. Um, they have welfare officers in the school. Um, the lecturers have an open door policy. So whether it's sort of emotional welfare support that you need or whether it's academic support, there's usually someone to go to. Um, I'd say the only real difference in first year and second year support wise is that we don't have weekly tutorials anymore in first year you have weekly tutorials with your personal tutor and your tutor group and that's nice but by second year that kind of drops away you've got two tutorials one in first semester and one in second semester but by then i mean i feel comfortable enough that i see my personal tutor fairly regularly uh, and i see my tutees regularly and i talk to the other lecturers when i need help so i think putting that foundation in place in first year means that you just then ask for the support when when you need it. What career internship opportunities have you seen? Loads, loads. There's the ones that are advertised. Um, we have a placement year now within physics, so there's a lot of talks, industry talks and things like that. There are events that are geared towards third year and fourth year, final year physics students, but there's always an emphasis that first and second years and foundation year or whoever can come along um, so I really like that and you know there's there's talks from other academics from other universities that are sort of pitched at PhD level um, they're for research groups really but again there's there's a, a policy there of openness that undergraduates are free to attend and there's usually refreshments afterwards or a mixer event afterwards so Mixing and meeting with these people who do the jobs that you think you might be interested in or just talking to someone that does something different that you hadn't thought about, those opportunities are there. They are fairly well publicised. And then the best thing to do is just talk to lots of people and figure out and get an idea of, of what you want to do. Professor Mark Fromhold, do you feel you benefit from a multinational environment? Thank you for that question, Mark. Mark is... Uh, lectures us in second year thermal and statistical physics um, and I feel this might have a slight political slant to it. <laughs> Mark I think you know very well how I feel about this. We have a problem with diversity in physics and it's not that it isn't there but it's not really spoken about very often but yeah I benefit from a, a multinational environment. We as undergraduates there aren't that many international students in the foundation year there were loads it was uh, probably 50% maybe uh, and it's hugely beneficial because you get to mix with people from different backgrounds. Um, I am friends with a lot of Mark's uh, PhD students, we have lunch together, I sort of sneak into the tea room that I shouldn't be in and 
you've got a handful of students that have done their degree here. Um, you've got uh, we've got a postdoc who's just arrived from India, um, and people who have come from different backgrounds, different universities, and you know science is science usually benefits from diversity of of thought um, because we're trying to push the boundaries we're trying to discover something new so I think having people from completely different backgrounds means they might have a different way of thinking about things um, I'd like to say that my arts background might help me uh, when I become a physicist um, yeah I don't know what else I can say about that I think it's hugely important hugely hugely important because if you end up all being the same then you're only going to do the same science so yeah more diversity please um, have your specific interests in areas of physics changed at all? This is from Tobias. Hello, Tobias. Um, I know that during second year I became completely disinterested in astro and started to love theoretical modules a lot more. Tobias, yeah, I've touched on this a little bit already. Maths. Um, I knew that my love of astronomy had kind of diminished. You know, that, was, that wasn't why I was starting my degree. It wasn't to do astronomy. Um, I still love the night sky and I still appreciate it. I think it's fantastic. Um, the universe is incredible, but uh, yeah, maths, like uh, from foundation year, I've just pushed myself to do more maths. Um, I still don't feel like the most brilliant mathematician, but it's where my interests lie, so I'm going to keep pushing. And like I said, I might, I might switch to theoretical, so we'll see. Vikrant sent a question. You should probably talk about how your thought process has evolved a year towards your preferred area of interest in physics. My thought process. So I, yeah. But yeah, my th my thought processes have changed. It's hard to sort of quantify though, but I'm a little bit more confident. Um, I think that's helped. I don't fully know where, you know, where my path is going to lead. I've got ideas of where I want to be, but I'm very open to new opportunities along the way. Um, that's kind of the fun of it. Um, yeah, I had a tough week this week. I didn't get things done the way I wanted to. I wasn't progressing as well as I wanted to. I wanted to get my coursework out of the way and I wanted to have the weekend free. So I beat myself up about that a little bit, which isn't helpful because then you just don't become productive at all. Um, and I forget that I'm hard on myself because it's hard to see, but I've got a great group of friends that, that will remind me when I am. And being hard on yourself or it doesn't mean you're not working hard. It just means giving yourself a break for not being where you want to be right now, I guess. And that's been a huge lesson. Chris Morley. Hello, Chris. Uh, Chris is a PhD student at Nottingham. Um, what have you found surprising about studying physics so far? Well, Chris, that is, that is a tough question. I want to say it's surprising that I still don't have a clue what's going on, but I don't think that's surprising at all. I think that's quite expected of physics. I'm kind of surprised that I'm still here because at its core, my main goal was to give physics a go, see if I liked it still when I was actually studying the subject properly and to see if I was any good. I mean, by any good, I mean capable of passing exams and, and retaining some of the information. So the fact that I'm here is is surprising and I'm just going to keep going and at the moment that path is maths but I've, I've actually been surprised by how much I've enjoyed computing as well um, I never really thought about programming so yeah I'm sure there are many many more surprises along the way Dan says how do you make the most of second year what's your balance of work and social I've made the most of second year by um, having a routine <laughs> I never thought I would be this person I'm kind of proud, but also I think 19-year-old Hannah would be slightly disappointed. Um, I go in nine to five. I treat, I have treated the foundation year and undergraduate physics like a job. I go in nine to five. Sometimes I work longer, sometimes I work less. But I treat it like a job. I go to my lectures. Between my lectures, I do my coursework. And then once I've done my coursework, I do problems and I try and write notes and ask about things that I can't quite get my head around. Um, I run because otherwise I'd go insane and I have set running days because if I don't have those set running days I won't run. Um, I'm working towards trying to keep my weekends free because I can feel the pressure starting to mount a little bit before exams and it's still another two months away um, so I need to make sure I'm resting 
it's weird it's like some kind of it's a race it's like training for a marathon you've got to train hard but you've also got to rest and look after yourself social i am a very sociable person uh i love going out and spending time with my friends so i make that a priority um i manage to go out and see my friends most fridays today is um England are playing Wales in the rugby, so I'm going to go over and watch that with some friends. Um, no physics today at all. So I don't know. I guess figure out what your priorities are and make some kind of plan. For me, having a routine means I don't have to think about uh, things. I don't have to plan because it's the same thing every week. <laughs> God, I sound so boring. So there you go. That's words of wisdom for you, Daniel. 21 year old Daniel from 31 year old Hannah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you for those questions. Right, I'm going to go outside in the sunshine and not make another video for another six months. Goodbye.